On September 20th, Universal Studios Beijing and its resort officially opened, making it the largest of the five Universal Studios globally. The enthusiasm of Chinese patrons is high, both during the advanced stress test and after the official opening of the park. In the context of worsening U.S.-China relations in recent years, its opening is full of complexities. Universal Studios Beijing is a large joint venture between Chinese and U.S. companies. It was originally proposed 20 years ago by the Beijing Tourism Group, one of China's largest tourism enterprise groups. Upon completion of the theme park, Universal Studios' parent company, a Comcast Group company, holds a 30% stake and a Chinese state-owned tourism company holds a 70% stake. Universal Studios is a well-known theme park brand in the U.S. alongside Disneyland. The Universal Studios in Beijing includes familiar scenes common to other studios, such as Transformers, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, and Hollywood. A new theme park has been added, that is, Kung Fu Panda. The site itself is massive. It's the equivalent about 230 football fields featuring seven different theme zones. You can say hi to Transformers with Kung Fu Panda, Harry Potter. Many young fans are most excited about have a reach out and touch Jurassic Park dinosaurs. Or maybe not. China Real Estate News reported that in 2009, the director of the Beijing Municipal Development and Reform Commission said that China's state council would like to reduce the scale of the project investment and include more Chinese elements. Beijing Daily reported that the Beijing Communist Party secretary also said he wanted the park to incorporate more Chinese elements when he met with the Comcast Group chairman and CEO on August 16, 2021. Well, I think what makes this different is it's, it's like the latest generation of Universal Parks, but it's done with a Chinese influence. So we brought global experience and then we mixed it with local insights. So this park really has taken the very best of two worlds and brought it right to the people of China. There is no doubt that Kung Fu Panda is seen by all as an important Chinese element. Although everyone knows that pandas are a Chinese specialty, Kung Fu Panda is an American production. Just like many lions live in Africa, the Lion King is a Hollywood culture. According to online discussions and Chinese media reports, the most popular attraction at the theme park in Beijing is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. After decades of China's reform and opening up, Chinese people have had access to more Western culture. It has made the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP's, public opinion propaganda against the U.S. in recent years much less effective. Another Chinese feature of the theme park in Beijing is the super strict security check. It's the only Universal Studios in the world that requires two security checks. From the moment of entering Beijing Universal City Avenue, one has to go through a full security check and a second one upon entering the park. Face recognition is also required, making it the only Universal Studios globally to do so. Buying tickets requires an app, and they can only be purchased using one's real name with an ID, i.e. a Chinese resident ID card or a passport for non-Chinese. Once one has passed the security checks and bought the ticket, the third step is to scan the health code. The first scan is done on the street outside the park, and the second scan upon entering the park, followed by scanning the health code every time one enters an amusement facility, a restaurant, or a store. 
Without a cell phone, WeChat, and the health code given by the Beijing municipal government, it's virtually impossible to get around in the park. The theme park currently offers four tiers of tickets, ranging from about 65 US dollars in the low season to roughly 116 US dollars in the high season. Due to the outbreak, the number of visitors on the opening day was limited to 10,000. On September 14th, tickets for the opening day were sold online in advance. They were snatched up within three minutes. In the first month after the opening, about 40% of the tickets were bought by local residents in Beijing, while the cities with the second and third largest number of tourists buying tickets are Tianjin and Shanghai, respectively. Some visitors responded that they had to wait 90 minutes to enter the wizarding world of Harry Potter, 60 minutes for the Transformers, and even half an hour for some ice cream. Two factors probably contribute to such a high number of visitors. One is that Chinese children are known as the Little Emperors. Their parents spoil them, willing to do anything for them. The second is that Chinese people are unable to travel abroad due to the outbreak, making amusement parks an attractive alternative. CCP officials displayed an unusually grand show of support for Universal Studios Beijing. The opening ceremony was attended by senior CCP officials, including the top three officials from Beijing, the Vice Propaganda Minister and the Minister of Culture and Tourism. In stark contrast, a national tourist resort in the city of Dalian, a Japanese-style street, was forced to close in early September after opening just one week. The reason is cited to be the high patriotic spirit against Japan from the online community in China. <laughs> The investors of the project are Chinese. The city of Dalian initially hoped to attract Japanese companies to venture into the resort and develop tourism by virtue of the Japanese-style street project. However, China's high-level media, People's Daily, quoted an internet user criticizing the street. Dalian suffered from Japanese colonial invasion. It should not use Japanese cultural hype for commercial gain. The Global Times, China's official media, published an editorial on the opening day of Universal Studios Beijing, saying that the grand opening showed the enthusiasm and expanding energy of Sino-American civil engagement. It's no surprise, the editor-in-chief of the Global Times has the nickname Frisbee Catcher, which is widely known among the Chinese public. The metaphor is to mock Hu as a well-trained dog to catch a frisbee from any direction. No matter what direction the CCP moves, whether it's to the left or to the right, he can always produce nifty lines to keep up with it. In other words, the wizarding world in Universal Studios can be criticized under the label of spiritual pollution from the West, or it could be touted as a mascot for cultural exchange between China and the US depending on the CCP's needs at the time. Average frontline operators at Universal Studios Beijing work 500 hours per quarter and earn a monthly salary of about 3,500 RMB after taxes, or US 550 per month. According to estimation, the Universal Studio project will boost Beijing's GDP by an average of 1.02% per year while it is under construction. After completion of the project, according to the direct park revenue of 10 billion yuan per year and three to five times the economic revenue, it can boost Beijing's GDP by 0.28%. And the direct employment in the park should be between 12 to 15,000 employees and the indirect employment will be three to four times of that number. The CCP can join hands with the US and Japan to make fortunes when there is no threat to its values and ideology and no threat to its rule. Projects like Universal Studios Beijing have been enjoying the green light from the CCP for a long time. It's also the path that the CCP has been using to compromise the international capital leveraging the enormous consumer power of its 1.4 billion Chinese. Today, despite China's massive market, a significant amount of international capital has chosen to leave. Against the exodus, some have chosen to enter China. It is worth mentioning that both in the past and the present, when capital chooses to enter China, they must comply with the directives given by the CCP. In many cases, the influence of such directives goes beyond China. 
As early as 2001, news broke that NBC Universal was planning to build a theme park in China, presumably as part of a joint project between NBC and the CCP. According to WikiWand, NBC News is part of the NBC Universal News Group. If you are interested, watch and pay attention to how NBC News covers China and the CCP. When Universal Pictures announced the construction of the Universal Studios Beijing theme park in 2014, it was estimated to cost 3.3 billion US dollars to build. Comcast CEO said in 2017 that Universal Studios Beijing would provide 1 billion US dollars in annual operating cash flow once the park opened. Some media commentators have suggested that the case of Universal Studios Beijing is proof that Hollywood's bets on China have paid off. Yet, it's too early to conclude when one operates on a volatile turf under the CCP.